Spinal stenosis is a growing problem um, in the United States. And, and the reason why it's a growing problem is people are living longer. And as we live longer, what we're seeing is that everybody has more degeneration on their spine, which means they get more disc bulges, uh, the facet joints get uh, big and swollen, and a ligament in the back part of the spinal canal called the ligament inflavum, it can get kind of uh, hypertrophy or bulge into the spinal canal. We call it the shopping cart sign. So patients, when they're standing or upright walking, they can only stand or walk a certain distance. And once, once they reach that time or that distance, they find that their legs feel like they're on fire. You know, they kind of cramp up, they, just, they have severe pain in their legs and they almost have to sit down. And what happens is when they sit and lean forward, their symptoms completely resolve. And, and why we call it the shopping cart sign is because if you ask that same patient, like, hey, if you go to the grocery store, how far can you walk? And they'll tell you that, well, gal, if I get the shopping cart and I, I lean over it, I can stand and walk for as long as I want, but they want to be over in that hunched over position. And that's kind of mimicking what they do when they sit and lean forward to get these symptoms to go away. That shopping cart sign is, is them trying to do that while they're standing or walking. We're definitely gonna try the simple things first. So those patients, I'm probably gonna um, give them different types of medications to try. I'm gonna get them started in physical therapy um, and I'm gonna follow up with them within four to six weeks. Um, at that point, if they're not improving or their symptoms aren't getting better, um, then I'm gonna offer them an epidural. And typically I'm gonna see if just a simple injection resolves the issue. Now let's say that epidural helps that patient out for three to six months. I may opt to continue that for a period of time, continue to repeat the epidural until they're no longer effective. But say that epidural only helps out for a couple weeks. Well, at that point, I'm probably gonna look at alternatives. Over the uh, uh, last several years, we've had some newer treatments come to the market that have allowed us to offer these to patients. And that would be two things. One is a procedure called the mild or minimally invasive lumbar decompression. And another one are spacers and specifically the one that we're, we're doing here is through a company called Vertiflex and it's called the Superion Spacer. These are um, very minimally invasive surgical procedures that need to be done either at the, the surgery center or the hospital. The mild procedure, you know, patients are going to be brought back into the operating room. We're going to position them in a way to kind of put them in a slight flexed position so we can access area or the, the level of interest where they have the spinal stenosis. Just kind of like other procedures, we're gonna clean off their skin with uh, sterile soap, um, put uh, sterile drapes over the top of them. And then what we use is an X-ray to identify the, the level that needs to be treated. And once we identify that level, I'm gonna make a small midline incision right over the level. I'm gonna get the introducer down where I need it. And then over the top of the introducer, I'm gonna get my equipment into place. And basically what I'm, what I'm creating is almost like a, a working cannula that looks like a straw. And what happens is then I put equipment down through that straw to do, to do the procedure. So in this case, I'm gonna start out on either the left or the right side. I'm gonna get that working cannula in place. And then I take a instrument called a rangeur. The rangeur is uh, surgical equipment that allows me to take bites, small bites of bone and of the ligament. And so the lamina above and below of interest, I'm gonna to try to take some bites of bone to create some space uh, for me to work. Once I've created enough space, at that point, I'm gonna put what's called the tissue sculptor in. The tissue sculptor is almost like a fancy ice cream scooper. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing hunks of ligament and pulling it out. And once I've removed enough bone and ligament to open that area up, then I'll move over to the opposite side and repeat all the procedures. What I've also done at the beginning of the procedure is I've placed an epidural needle and I'm using small amounts of contrast. And what I see is that as I do the procedure, the contrast spreads more and more. That tells me that I've adequately decompressed the area of interest. And once I see enough contrast flow, I know I've opened that area of up, the stenosis is no longer there. And at that point I'm done um, doing the procedure. Great part about that incision I've made, it is so small, it doesn't require any sutures or staples. Basically, we put a stereo strip, a stereo strip over the top of it and, and let it heal. Patients, um, surprisingly enough, after this procedure have little to no pain. 
and there are really no restrictions afterwards. I, I tell them to it, let pain be their guide. The day after the procedure, I tell them, do what you can do. If you're sore, stop doing it. If you're able to do it, move on and do it. I usually have them follow up 10 to 14 days afterwards. At that appointment, I'm probably going to get them into a walking program. These patients were limited in standing and walking before. Now I'm going to start to advance that program so they can do more um, now that we've, we've got, made the stenosis go away. Just like the mild procedure, um, patients who are going to undergo the VertiFlex Superion placement will schedule a time um, to have the procedure done at a surgery center or hospital. Day of the procedure, the patients will come in, they'll be brought back into the operating room, and once again, we're going to position them in a flex position. Once we get them in the position we want, we clean off their skin with uh, sterile soap, put, cover them up with sterile drapes, and then I use a C-arm to identify the level of interest where I'm going to do the procedure. Once I, I've identified the level that we're going to treat, I actually make a small midline incision. I use a trocar to go down between the uh, spinous process of interest. And then I use a series of dilators. And basically what the series of dilators are doing is they're creating a working space for me to get the implant in. Once I've got the last dilator in place, I use um, an instrument called a reamer. I actually put it down, it sticks out through the end of my working cannula. And I actually kind of ream out um, some of the soft tissue and bone in the area um, to create even more space for the implant to get in. At that time, I put a sizer down my working cannula and I measure the distance between the spinous processes at that level. That tells me the size of implant I want to put in. And then at that point, I will put the implant down and it's in a closed position. And then I've got a almost what's like a screwdriver where I slowly open the device. And once I get it open and it's straddling the, the spinous process above and below, then we tap it down into place with a surgical hammer. The incision's a little bit bigger than the mild procedure. It's about uh, 10 millimeters or a, a, a centimeter in length. It usually requires a couple deep sutures to close um, the incision with skin staples to, to hold the, the incision closed. Patients will follow up 10 to 14 days afterwards to have the staples removed. And usually at that point, I'll look to get them in a physical therapy program or walking program to kind of maximize their functional capabilities since they were so limited before. Mild procedure or the VertiFlex Superior procedure doesn't help the patient's symptoms ultimately. At that point, the patient is still a, a surgical candidate. They can still go see a surgeon. They can still go get a lumbar decompression to alleviate their pain. So I look at these devices as kind of being a bridge between doing medications, physical therapy, and then a simple lumbar epidural to a major surgery. Now we've got two more uh, minimally invasive options to help patients before um, they, they would have to consider having a lumbar surgery. Biggest complication with either one of these procedures would be that it doesn't work. Patient has, you know, goes to the operating room, gets a small incision, you do the procedure, and at the end, it doesn't help. It doesn't help them out. I, I'd say that would be the biggest downside to this procedure. But unfortunately, you know, in any procedure a patient has done, there is no guarantee that it's going to resolve their symptoms. Other minor complications that could occur is, is one, infection. Anytime you make an incision in the skin. Uh, the risk of infection is usually less than one or two percent, but it, it does happen. Typically, you're able to resolve that issue with uh, antibiotics for a few weeks. If that doesn't work, then sometimes you have to go back in and uh, actually do what's called an IND. And an IND is a procedure where you go in and, and clean out the incision site. Now, in the case of the mild, there's no, there's no hardware put in. So if they develop an infection that doesn't heal, um, it's basically just seeing the infectious disease doctor and probably be on an anti IV antibiotics for a period of time. But unfortunately, when you put hardware in a patient like the VertiFlex Imperion, if that one gets infected, then you, you have to do a procedure where you'd have to take the, the hardware out. One, I've been doing both for years. And two, um, I have been a national trainer for both companies, meaning that both companies have used me to do national um, educational and, and trainings with other physicians. Three, four times a year, 
I'll, get, I'll, I'll go down to a neutral part of the United States and other physicians will fly in and I'll actually train these physicians how to do the procedure on, on, on cadavers. I'd say our success rate with these is in the 70 to 80 percent range and that kind of follows along with what we see with some of the long-term uh, medical evidence that have been published on these procedures. You know, um, if you look at the mild procedure, they've had uh, studies that have tracked patients out for two years. And what we've seen is that there's about an 80% success rate in patients with uh, a multifactorial stenosis. Not only do they get better initially, but it's sustained out to two years. Same with the vertiflex superior procedure. They have five years worth of follow-up on patients who have had the procedure done. And they also are showing sustained, effective relief for patients with spinal stenosis at about an 80% uh, improvement rate. The Vertiflex Superion, it's a, it's a, it's a one-time deal. Um, it can never be repeated, obviously, because if you already got a spacer at that level of interest, um, uh, you can't repeat or put another spacer in there. They may have to either have uh, uh, an epidural done to see if that gets them back to feeling good, or uh, potentially look at other treatments, such as surgery, to alleviate uh, uh, pain if it comes back. As far as the mild procedure goes, we're digging out a ligament that's got hypertrophied over the years. The aging or degeneration process doesn't stop after we do that procedure. So the patient goes back to doing their normal activities. Over the next few years, that ligament may hypertrophy again. That is a procedure that can be repeated if needed over time. Next, um, we have some testimonials from patients who have had the mild and the vertiflex procedure done and so they can tell you how the procedure has changed their lives for the better.